as we think a little bit about real devices in electricity and magnetism, it's important to think about potentials and metals. Do you notice as we talk about potential, I keep mentioning volts, and that's really the common word in electricity, right? Volts and voltage, and what's the volts? And the other thing we have to have is conducting wires. Metals are very critical to circuits, and the reason circuits work the way they do, partly, is because metals do what they do. So let's look at the potential of a conductor. And again, by conductor, I mean something with freely moving charge in it, metal being the most common conductor. I'll slip up and say metal a lot, but I'm trying to be general since this is physics and say conductor. So we talked about the electric field around a conductor. We said if you have just a charged sort of piece of lumpy conductor, doesn't matter too much the exact shape, and if you put charge on it, we talked about what's going to happen, is in a conductor, the uh, charges move so that two things are true. Basically, they'll move so that E field equals zero inside the conductor. So the charges will build up on the surface in whatever arrangement they need, whatever density of surface charge is necessary to make E equal zero. It might not even be constant. They, they, they can build up in certain regions where they're needed. The surface charge density can change over the surface, and it can respond. If you have a big negative charge out there, then that'll suck more up here. So it's not like some uniform charge density. The reason it can be so versatile and make the E field zero inside is it'll move and do whatever it needs to do to make the E field zero inside. And also, the E field is uh, perpendicular to the surface, uh, right at the surface. Okay. So you can have zero field everywhere, and then right when you get out, there's your field. And you can have a field on the outside like that. But it's always perpendicular like that. Okay. That's what we learned when we thought about the electric field and the way a metal behaves or a conductor behaves. Now, let's see what does potential tell us. Well, delta V, I can't even write it anymore. Delta V from A to B is minus the integral from A to B of E dot dS. Right? So let's see, what does that tell us? Well, if we go along the surface, if we put our A and our B on the surface, say we start uh, here and we go to here, our little dS's are always going to be in the surface because we do that integral. Right? There's your dS's there, and the E's are always going to be perpendicular. So if we go along the surface, E is perpendicular to dS. So delta V is going to be zero. Any two points you pick on the surface and move around in all three dimensions, you're never going to get a difference in potential. So what that means is that the potential is constant on the surface of a metal. If one part of the metal or the conductor is at 9 volts, the whole thing's at 9 volts, if you're in electrostatic equilibrium. Okay. We can even say a little bit more. What if you go inside? What if you're at A and you go and put B there? Well, now you can have your dS's go in other directions on the surface, but the E field is zero. Right? So dS can be whatever it wants. If the electric field is zero, then delta V is also going to be zero. So the potential is constant on the surface and inside the metal. Conductor. That's really all we need to know. But that's very important. That means when you have a, a wire 
and you hook it to some power supply, and the power supply is supposed to be at 10 volts, then you know that entire wire is at 10 volts. That's the point. That's what we use metal wires, because metals are very good conductors, and they keep this condition true. If I put this side of my wire at 10 volts, I know that side will be at 10 volts uh, in electrostatics. We'll see what else can happen later. <laughs>